Radio Now 100.9's Indie Connection with Emily Matheny. Hello, I'm Emily Matheny, your host. Right now, we are in the middle of the 2022 session of the Indiana General Assembly. This is the time annually when legislators meet at the State House and discuss and vote on legislation that could become law. To help explain the process, my guest this week is Raven Rigel, president of Marion County Young Democrats. To start, Raven explains what makes up the General Assembly and what the process is to get a bill to become a law. Yeah, so we have the Indiana General Assembly. It is comprised of 150 members. You have 50 on the Senate side, 100 on the House of Representatives side. We meet annually in a non-budget year. We meet from January to about March. Um, In a budget year, that group is meeting from January uh, till about mid-April. And that means that we are also in a part-time legislature state, which means that those representatives and senators go home to return to their jobs, their doctors, lawyers, teachers, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned a budget year. How is a budget year different than like the year we're currently having in 2022? Yeah, so the even years are non-budget years traditionally. And what that means when we are in a budget year is that means that the money allocation and distribution that is used uh, by the state to get to local municipalities and across the state to individuals is actually considered. They do not open the budget if it is not a budget year. So that means that we tell people um, who are just learning about the legislature, if it's in a non-budget year, then it is best that you don't have any legislation or, you know, try to push any legislation that has to do with money or fiscal impact or responsibilities uh, because it's quite difficult when it's not a budget year. Mm -hmm. And when we are um, hearing about the legislation that is being proposed, is there a Mm -hmm. range of topics that are considered or is it just kind of, how does that process work? Yeah, so how basically it's more like how a bill becomes law, right? Mm -hmm. So a topic is proposed, an idea is proposed, it's presented to the lawyers at the legislature. Um, There is a team of uh, nonpartisan lawyers that draft the legislation and then it is assigned to committees. Now, the topics can be anything from child care to gentrification, to juvenile detention. And what will happen is those bills will be drafted, and then based on their topic, they'll go to a specific committee. And those committees are various, right? There are appropriations, Mm -hmm. there's courts and criminal code, there's public health, public policy, there's education, utilities, There's roads and transportation, et cetera. Um, And so a part of that process is your bill can be on any topic that is concerning and based on the details of the legislation. It will then be assigned to a particular committee that covers that specific topic. Because although they might be vast and various, I guarantee you that they do impact a certain area of life. And that's how we get the committee assignments most of the time. Mm -hmm. And so after it goes through the committees, what happens next Mm -hmm. if it comes out of committees? Yeah, so if it gets a hearing and it's heard in committee and they vote to get it out of committee, right? So that's when the testifiers come in. That's when they learn so much about the the area that the, the bill is affecting then it can go to either the House or the Senate floor. Um, There is a committee process on both sides. And so that means that if it comes out of the committee on the House side, it goes to the House floor. Um, It goes through a amend and vote. Maybe changes can be made. Testimony um, can be revisited. And that will happen on both sides. And if it makes it out the House floor then it is swapped 
in the middle of session, the House bills that make it out of committee make it past a floor vote, which is the actual legislative body, the House of Representatives. Once it makes it past them, then it goes to the Senate, and the Senate's bills go over to the House, and they do the same thing again. (laughs) It goes through another committee process. If it makes it through that committee process, it goes right back to that floor for vote. Um, And if it makes it out there, then it goes back to its respective chamber. If it makes it past the chamber, sometimes that's not sometimes that is when we go into what's called conference committees. And what the respective chambers do is they decide then if the bill is worth being revisited if it needs to be changed, if a language needs to be stripped or added, Mm -hmm. um, if language needs to be completely taken away. (laughs) Mm -hmm. All of that is decided in that conference committee time. And if it makes it beyond that, then it goes back to those votes. And if it makes it past those votes again, then we start talking about bills becoming actual law signed by the governor. Because once it makes it out of the chambers completely, once it has gone through those processes, then it has to be signed by the governor to make it a public law. Mm-hmm. And so it, let's say I'm following, um, I'm heavily involved in education and I've attended, the, mm-hmm. um, I haven't attended any meetings yet. Where would I want to get involved or where could I get involved at, as a citizen and either voice my support yeah. or disapproval of a, a potential uh, piece of legislation? Yeah, so uh, you can do it in various ways. You can, you know, you can contact the chair of that committee, uh, Mm -hmm. the committee in which your legislation is. You said education. So there is an education committee on the House side, and there is an education committee on the Senate side. And so you can do it. Uh, You can contact that chair that way. You can also contact the leaders of the chambers. There are four leaders uh, representing the minority and majority caucuses. Uh, They're representing those individuals, and you can contact them. So you can do it in a few ways. You can start by contacting the chair of that committee to make sure a certain bill is heard. You don't even have to just contact the chair. You start with the chair, (laughs) but you can certainly contact all members of that committee. I like to tell everybody, find a legislator who is a champion for your legislation. So sometimes you can also, you know, get out in the community, do some grassroots organizing and contact a legislator that might be champion a particular topic on education right and say hey can we work together so that you can possibly file a bill that can get some interest in my specific topic in the realm of education then we know that as it is making it through that chair and committee process that you also have a legislator also connecting with the members of the committee also connect connecting with the chair of the committee you can also be sure that like i said you're contacting that leadership because leadership helps things become assigned and leadership has conversations about what they're trying to achieve as a group to be sure that certain things and certain goals are tackled so you can do it that way. You can also come up to the state house and testify. You can fill out, you can go up there, you can fill out forms that help Um, get you in front of a committee to testify. There are so many ways, but it starts with learning, you know, a little bit about that committee, the chair, about what they stand for, and then contacting them. And you can do that email, call, you can even go up to the state house in person, if that helps a little bit. No, that's amazing. So I don't have to directly contact my senator or my representative. I can find someone who is championing the things that I believe in. Yes, yes, most certainly. I think that's one of the more strategic ways uh, to get things passed. Certainly consider contacting your legislator and let them know, hey, as a concerned citizen, I'm working on X, Y, and Z, and I'm working with so-and-so. How can you help? But most certainly try to find champions 
that treasure the same things that you do because that helps as well. Mm -hmm. And when the session starts with all these um, potential pieces of legislation before they go to committees, how many are submitted and how many actually go through past the committee that first round? I cannot give a definitive number of how many go past committee uh, because they have a set amount of bills that they can file in a short session because they are on more limited time mm -hmm. and they get a, a higher amount of bills that they can file through the longer sessions, the budget sessions, because they've got more time. And so it depends exactly on how leadership is feeling, how the chairs of those committees are feeling, et cetera. So I, I can't say if there is like 200 bills that are definitely get hearing because sometimes it just depends on the mood of the the legislature and what they are trying to achieve. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. No, that makes complete sense. When can I start finding out what is being looked at for the next session? So like once the yeah. session ends, how does that work? Yeah. So one of the cool things that I've seen the just many legislatures do across the country is they have summer study committees, particularly if they're part-time legislatures. And what that means is during the interim, during, you know, the, the time outside of session, there was a period in which they come in and they discuss topics that may be legislation that didn't make it through, that may be community concerns about particular things, right? Like, um, I know that I saw the legislature have conversations about health care workers uh, this last summer because the, uh, of the pandemic. And so you can go into those committees and start sort of get a feeler of those concerns based on what summer study committees are assigned. Again, they are certain topics and those topics are distributed among committees and they are spoken about there. You can also have a chat with your legislature if you can, you know, contact their office and say, hey, what, what's going on in our district? I really want to know what's happening, right? You know, mm -hmm. there are so many ways that you can contact your representatives. And it's not just your reps or your senators, right? You've got city, county people. You've got precinct committee people. You've got... Uh, county assessors, auditors, recorders, treasurers, the list goes on and on of positions that are filled in which they are advocates for all of us. And feel free to contact them to get, get a feeler on what is happening in our community and is there a conversation that needs to be had about legislation that should be passed. Mm -hmm. And let's say I'm a young person who is just starting to get interested and really starting to follow what's happening politically. What's the mm -hmm. best way for me to get started? Yeah, I think that it goes, um, it starts with knowing a bit of how our structure works in the state of Indiana. So in Marion County, I know that we've got PCs, We've got township trustees. We've got city county people. We've got various levels of government that we are aware of. And so it starts by knowing what your levels of government look like and learning what those positions do. So then we can maybe start to see how the puzzle is created, right? Because each of them is a piece that contributes to the larger puzzle. Legislation isn't just passed by the legislature, right? There are policies mm -hmm and directives that come from your local government members every day, individuals that see us on a more um, micro level. And so first it starts by sort of getting acquainted with that, then having conversations with those individuals. Get involved with your local advocates and see which groups and which organizations or agencies are out there doing the work that concerns you. Because then I guarantee you they're having a conversation about policy that makes that field better. And don't be afraid to 
go out in the world. Um, learn about what's happening in other states and in other counties. Learn about, you know, legislation or policy that is in your neighboring city because maybe you can use it as a comparison tool or as a benchmark for where you don't want to go, right? Mm -hmm. And so it's such a large puzzle, but I think that it starts with, you know, learning a bit more about how this all works and how you can creatively engage in it. And it, it never ends, but sort of the tail end of it is really believing in what you are trying to achieve and what you are trying to do because policy and advocacy are long-term games and it doesn't always happen overnight and we get so tired. I know, I know, trust me, even <laughs> as a young person, right, we get so mm -hmm. tired and we're so overwhelmed and bombarded with such a vast amount of information and with such a vast amount of world problems that we can be overstimulated. But knowing that you want to fight and you want to make a change is a great tool that you can use in your arsenal when you are stressed and overmaxed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And if I am ready to take that step and I want to bring some of my friends along with me, how can I do that? How can I start the conversation with my own peers? Yeah. You know, it, it, it starts with that issue that concerns you. If you are an individual that is concerned about climate change, have a conversation about climate change and about what needs to be done. You know, come to the table with solutions, right? We are such a brilliant, fortunate group because we've got so much information at our hands. Right. And so it starts by having that conversation saying, hey, I'm concerned about this. Let's start talking. And once mm -hmm. you start talking and you are familiar with how the levels of government and the levels of advocacy work, then you can go in and start talking with your city councilors. Then you go in and start talking with your mayors and you can go in and start talking with your senators and reps. Because once you know what you're trying to achieve, once you have a few solutions, because that helps, <laughs> you know, uh, it helps. And once you've got your team with you, then you can definitely go and take names in the world. Excellent. And if I am trying to find out where all the legislation is during the process, so I know I can reference the bills that are happening, like the House bills, the Senate mm -hmm. bills. How can I find those so when I talk to my legislators or reach out to those who are invested in what I believe in, how do I find those numbers? Yeah, you can go to iga.in.gov. That and for us, um, indy.gov. Uh, well, the Indianapolis Marion County page are great resources that we utilize to know what's happening in our city um, and know what's happening in our state. So as I said, it, it, a huge part of it is familiarizing yourself with how things work. Um, and some of that is going to those websites, which are like the state website, iga.in.gov, and your local community website, your local city website, to know what is going on. <laughs> <laughs> Because once you know, you can actually start the process to get to action. Yeah, it can help you laser in because there's, like I said, there's so much going on and you can easily get lost in the sauce and we don't want that to happen. Mm -hmm. And as I'm learning more and finding issues that matter to me, are there times when I, throughout the year where I cannot reach out to legislators or is it in any kind of time moment? Your advocates, and I have to stress your advocates, right, those people who are elected, appointed, the public servants, they are human. And so there are some times, with respect, like think about holidays, mm -hmm. right, but still don't be afraid to contact them outside of, like, the general assemblies or outside of the convening of a city council right? Mm -hmm. Although they might be on vacation, that doesn't mean that they won't see the message. And if there's a delay, 
which there are delays, right? These offices are ran by humans, and a lot of times you might get a few legislators or few representatives that represent thousands, if not millions, right? Mm -hmm. And Mm -hmm. so definitely stay on them, but definitely know that you can contact all of them. Just contact them at any time. Mm -hmm. And they'll be able to get back with you outside of their vacation being human, really. Yeah, outside of being human. Because I assure you, your mayors and your teachers and your legislators, they're all people who want to make a change, right? They're Mm -hmm. all people who want to better our community. But they're also human. Exactly. And Raven, as we start to wrap up, is there anything else you want to hit on again or something you just really want to make sure our listeners walk away with? Yeah, um, I myself am the the president of a group of young Democrats, but let me be a witness that you are never too young to get up and make a change in whatever capacity that you want to do it in. Don't let anyone tell you how to serve. Don't let anyone tell you how to be an advocate. You simply just have to be. Absolutely amazing. Raven, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you. You have a wonderful, wonderful day. And good (laughs) luck, everyone. Go change the world and be impactful. Thank you for joining me, and please join me again next week. Remember, you can listen to any of the past episodes of Indies Connection on our website, RadioNowIndy.com. You can also stay up to date with local and entertainment news. Until next time, have a great week. Radio Now 100.9's Indie Connection with Emily Matheny.